Um, I am a researcher from the University of Glasgow. I'm in my early career stage. So I graduated from my PhD in 2016, which looked at a castrato who predominantly lived in Bath called Venanzio Rauzzini and how he trained um, his opera singers at the end of the 18th century. So if we fast forward a little bit, um, I was then granted funding to come here in Sydney and explore the Scottish music collections. The Ross Fund is a grant that's given to researchers in the University of Glasgow to explore Scottish collections in foreign lands. So that doesn't necessarily have to be music, it could be anything at all. I just happened to devise a project all about music because I wanted to see the late 18th and early 19th century examples of music in colonial Australia. My supervisor, Dr. David McGuinness, happened to be part of the Sound Heritage Network and he put me in touch with Matthew, who told me all about the Stuart Simons collections that's here at the Caroline Simpson Research Library. And I put together the application for the Ross Fund to come here and look at the Scottish music collections that are part of these volumes. The plan for this project was to survey the materials so that I can take back what's available here in the Caroline Simpson Library and give it to researchers in Glasgow so that they might be inspired to come and do their own research out here in Sydney or even to highlight the importance of this collection and why it needs to be digitised for researchers around the world to do their own kinds of research. So that was the aim of the fund. But what this tells us is that the collecting tradition didn't cease as soon as someone was taken out of their home and place and moved to a new home and place. And they still continue to have those traditions and they still continue to place value on these musical volumes. So quite often what you might find is that once music is bound and put in a volume in Britain, it sits on a library, it sits on a library shelf and then is never used again. Um, but what we find with these volumes is that the bindings have been broken apart and are falling to bits, which means that they've been heavily used and they've been opened up and laid for people to play from continuously. So that's quite an exciting revelation because we can see that there's a different function and a different value placed on this music once it's bound. Um, but it's also a nice story about telling us how important it was for people to bring their music collections with them. So I found a variety of different things. Um, they are, are really interesting volumes, for example, JHL. So it's got a lot of manuscript dance tunes. And I've managed to identify the book that the first nine tunes comes from, which is Malcolm McDonald's um, Strathspeys and Reels. Um, I've also found some Gaelic song. Um, there's also some quite interesting backstories to the volumes. So I've managed to identify a couple of the owners and trace their life from their emigration in Britain all the way through to their arrival in Sydney. So, for example, Lucy Haven's volume, which has been rebound since um, in, the, in the 21st century. Um, she's got a really nice collection of music and a really nice story that I've managed to trace while I've been here. Uh, so she was first born in Monomail in Fife. Then her family moved to Whitehaven, where her father was a doctor. When he passed away, the family then completely up and emigrated in 1839, arriving here in New South Wales. And she's clearly brought this volume with her because on the front of the title page, you can see Whitehaven, Cumberland, Lucy Havens. Um, so it's nice to know that I know where she's come from and I know where she's arrived. And I even know where she's lived here. So she did live in a house uh, not too far away at the rocks called Chesh Hunt House, no longer standing, unfortunately. But you can see the street and you can see that she would have been walking around this area on a regular basis. So yes, so there's some quite interesting pieces in, in, um, in Lucy Haven's volume, quite a lot of flute pieces, quite a lot of piano music and songs as well. So we get a really nice impression of the types of music that she was interested in and performed. There's also one of the pieces that is in here that her mother was a subscriber um, to the original piece. So there's an interesting story there about the importance of music to the family, since her mum's actually investing money and subscribing to books. Um, but there's more on that anon. I have to go and do a little bit more digging and research to find out the real story. We have here a volume that was collected by Hedy B. Harris. And this volume in itself is very interesting, partly because there is 
a very big Scottish connection. So Heidi was the sister of Flora MacDonald Harris, and the family were said to have been descendants from Flora MacDonald, who apparently saved Bonnie Prince Charlie during the Jacobite Rebellion. Um, and inside this collection, we find a Gaelic song. We actually find a couple of Gaelic songs, but we find um, this Gaelic song, Morag, in particular. And after doing some digging around and a little bit of searching, there's no other edition of this song that appears from Watland that we can find in any other library across the world. There is one other edition which is on microfilm um, at the British Library, but it was printed in 1800 by Muir. And this feels like an earlier edition of that, just tying in with the other music by Watland that appears in the volume, which is from 1790. Now, we know that this was gifted to Haiti in 1864 because the dates appear at the front of the volume and it says, um, given by her affectionate mama. So this might have been a family heirloom where it was gifting her a bound volume of music to remind her of her Scottish heritage. Um, or it could have been as she was starting to sing more and play more um, that her mother wanted to give her so a volume of music of maybe music that she sang in her youth or maybe that was connected to her father or some other member of the family. Um, that story isn't quite clear, but it does paint a picture of the importance of Scottish collections to a family who clearly had a Scottish connection themselves. The Gaelic song is quite beautiful to sing. It's a very lovely tune. Um, and it tells a lovely story about um, a young lady with a very nice uh, long hair and how there's a young gentleman lusting after this beautiful woman. So what I'm planning to do is I'm pulling together all of my findings from my research this month and I'm going to present those findings at Sound Heritage Sydney, which is a conference that's happening um, at the very end of this month. Um, so it's very preliminary research at the moment. Um, I don't have any concrete findings that I'll be able to present. but. What I will be able to say is how fascinating these collections are and the wealth of research that's still available to do. Um, so I'm really pleased that I'm able to be part of such an exciting project. <laughs>